and I'm Pearls Knitting. I'm a knitwear designer and I have been releasing patterns since 2014 and then I had a little break. The break happened because I didn't think that my patterns fit properly. So I wanted to explore the body types, create, learn how to do grading, uh, how to grade patterns, how to size, how to calculate it properly. So I took a class um, and it lasted a couple of months to learn how to grade, uh, to learn how to calculate and how to write patterns. Um, then I started learning about body typing, color theory and a whole lot of other things. Meanwhile, I was uh, calculating patterns, uh, just not publishing them. So what is this series going to be about? I wanted to create something that will address uh, all of the issues that um, when designers create sweaters, sometimes they want to keep the simplicity of the pattern, but then the sweater lacks in structure and fit. So these series will be, um, I want to create these series to, to help you <coughs> to fix some of those things and create a better fitting sweater. Um, I'm wearing my Everest. I started releasing patterns recently. This is the drop shoulder, um, unusual design, unusual construction sweater. Um, it actually has a collar like that, but I decided to fold it in. I do like folded collar and it changes it a little bit. So it's just different construction, but in every single one of my sweaters, my designs, I build the front neckline, I build the back neckline drop and uh, the sleeves and I implement the seams. So you can see there is a decorative seam right here and it doesn't stretch much because I do have a seam going at, um, at the separation of the neckline to the body. So if you're interested in that, I will link the pattern below. Um, meanwhile, or today as a start, maybe in the future, if you'll have questions, I'll answer them. Just um, put them in the comments below. And I will talk today probably about yoke sweaters what I don't like, what I do like, why I like them so much. I prefer seamed sweaters because of the, the construction and the structure, but I do like to knit seamless sweaters and mostly the uh, um, top down. That's my preference, um, but I would like to know what yours is. Let me know in the comments below. What do you like? Uh, do you like top down? bottom up what do you like better um so yoke sweater what is it a normal regular yoke sweater construction this is one it's not my design but this is what i made years of years ago it's just a cone shape there is no shape to the neckline it's the same on at the front and the back and it's basically just easy to create a pattern for easy to describe, easy to apply in the pattern itself, um, easy to make increases because they done evenly and there's not much structure to it. It's a cone shape. So very easy to knit and a lot of people, because we're kind of lazy, we like seamless sweaters. So designers smartened up and they decided that they didn't like how the normal regular yoke sweaters fit, which means that when you put it on, the back neckline drops so low, it opens half of your back. And it depends on how uh, large the opening of the neckline is, but most of the time, this is what it is. And then what happens with the front, because it's a circle, it rides up and it chokes you. So there's no build, there's no, no shaping to the front neckline at all. And then on top of that, there's no shaping for the shoulders. So if I'll just put it on like that, you can see that this part will stretch over my shoulder. So 
designers, I think, I don't even know when it happened, probably 2010, maybe later, um, designers started to implement short row technique. Um, and I implement a lot of different techniques and I like to learn a lot. So if you will have any comments on anything, just leave them down below. Designers started to implement short rows to build up the back neckline so it covers the back where it belongs, where it has to cover it. And then um, because of the short rows going, so they would start at the back, imagine that this is the back. They would start short, the short rows will start at the back, building that material up in um, very short short rows and then going further and further and then transitioning to the front and then that will create the drop at the front. So that'll create that shape. That'll be the majority of the time. But not a lot of designers, actually I rarely see it that any of the designers will build up the shoulders for the yoke sweater. I call it the modified yoke sweater because I do build shoulders. I build the back neckline drop, meaning I do not work the short rows from here to here and build that part up. What I do is I start my sweaters like they would start here and then I build the back neckline drop, meaning I do a shorter short rows and build that material just in very short short rows at the back. Meanwhile, or at the same time as the patterns read, I make increases for the shoulders so they will fit over the shoulders nicely. Imagine uh, if you ever wore if, if you ever wore a yoke cardigan. Most of the time yoke cardigans or reglan cardigans because the build is the same at the shoulder. They just fall off. They literally, they don't stay on your shoulders. So what you do is you just need uh, increases at the shoulder so the material will stretch. The con to it, this pattern will not be very easily applied to that pattern when you build the shoulders. So um, it's give and take whatever you prefer. Plus, if you are not confident with short row techniques, uh, increasing at the same time and doing all of that, um, if you're adventurous enough, learn it. If you're adventurous enough, I provide videos for every pattern I release. It's a knit along video, very long. <laughs> it's like two to three hours, but I do provide chapters so you can jump on to the chapter that you need and just knit along. I provide details. If you don't find it there, leave comments below. Um, reach out to me, find me on Ravelry, drop a question, I'll answer it. Um, so that would be the shoulder. Now there's another part to this. The yoke sweaters, the way they build, we make the designers, we, okay, or people who knit the yoke sweaters, they make even increases two, three, four, five, um, the, the stitches are increased evenly throughout the whole round. What I noticed over the years is, and I'm gonna grab my design, my sweater. This is my yoke sweater. And unfortunately it's black, but hopefully you will see it. So this is the back neckline and I have the drop. This is a wide neckline, so keep that in mind but I did build the shoulders. So you can see that there are increases at the shoulders to give me that shape. The structure here, um, I used to not bind off and pick up stitches at the neckline, the trim of the neckline. So this one stretches more. And this is why I improved my patterns by uh, binding off and picking up stitches and then continuously knitting and creating some structure so that neckline trim will hold. And then what I did, you can, uh, so for smaller sizes, when we make the yoke increases, getting back to yoke increases, we make them evenly in the round. What I noticed is for small sizes, it didn't matter much. 
but for larger sizes. And I do have uh, 21 sizes. Um, it's all inclusive. My sizes are defined as 30 inch bust to 70 inch, inch bust. I provide two PDFs, um, 10 sizes each. The 11th side, the size is excluded from that, but if you're interested in 70 inch bust, write to me. Um, I will guide you through, I will calculate it for you. I will hold your hand while you knit it because you're investing so much money in so much yarn and you're eager to knit it and you're beautiful. And if you want to wear your designs, I will help you. Um, so reach out to me. If you need that size, I will provide it for free. I will just send you that PDF and guide you through it. So what I noticed with the larger sizes is when we try to make those increases for the yoke, because they're done evenly and we need so many stitches to add, it creates bulk. It creates the bubble from here down to where the trim is or where your sweater ends. And if that's the look you go for, go for it. If that's what you do not like, um, what I've done, and you can do it, it's not as... Um, it's easier than, let's say, shape the shoulders and calculate all of the stitches, all of the short rows that you need to do for the front neckline, back neckline, all of that stuff. But you can maneuver the stitches and, let's say, avoid this area. So what I do is, from here to here, where my, um, I guess, not always the neckline because this is the wider neckline but probably the flat part of the neckline in majority of the sweaters. I avoid this area, so I do not make any increases in this specific area, like from here to here. The increases are done only around the shoulders. What it creates is just a little better fit and a flatter part here, where I already have bust and we don't want to have a hump on our back. So this avoids that. It just creates a better fitting sweater. So, and this is what I would like to introduce to all of the knitters, just working on a better knitting sweater, um, if you would like that. Sometimes it's just a creative process and you want to knit and you want to learn techniques and it's great. And some simple sweaters, even knitted flat are absolutely amazing. I like to knit in a round. I only use interchangeable uh, circular needles. Um, I learned to knit in flat, flat and like just straight needles. But I love, love, love interchangeable needles. And that's what I work with. That's what I like. Um, hopefully you do too. And if you do, leave me a comment below. Um, if you have questions on what needles do I use, leave a comment below ask me if you uh, like to share with your favorites leave a comment below um, I developed a lot of techniques and yes there are some pros and cons to working those patterns and creating and writing up a pattern using so many different short rows and increases so if you read my patterns I try to simplify it and I give you just the formula. I don't guide you through each, I used to, but I don't guide you through each turn of the short row. I just say, if you need to build the front neckline, uh, follow this direction. You need to turn every first stitch five times and then every second stitch six times. So it's up to you. And in here, I just use a lot of stitch markers, a lot of stitch markers, uh, removable ones, uh, permanent ones. I use a lot of stitch markers to guide me through this process. Numbered ones, lettered ones, whatever it is that helps me just, just achieve that goal and build a better sweater. Uh, I've uh, worked, I've done so many sweaters in my life. Um, I, I, started knitting when I was four or five and 
I've worked a few pairs of socks for my dolls and then I just moved on to sweaters and that's basically all I worked on. Um, lately I started knitting some socks uh, which is a good technique because all of that shaping around the hill it gives me ideas of how to build shoulders and how to create a better fitting sweater. Um, plus <laughs> I needed it. I decided to, to have my own socks because we're actually going to Edinburgh. So next week I will try to uh, have a second episode of these videos. Uh, if I will be able to record it from Edinburgh, I will. If I won't, then I will record it in Bath, which will be the following week. And I'll come back home and uh, this will be weekly episodes. Um, hopefully you will have questions. Um, if not, I do have topics to talk about. And um, what am I working on? I am working on a few designs. Um, they're coming out soon. Some are very simple shape like this um, with like lacy pattern. And then I have a few that are set in sleeves and a few that are yoke sweaters and then the reglan will be introduced. Um, color work, uh, lace, all of that is included. Um, it's, I don't particularly uh, write my patterns for beginners or advanced. I think if you're an adventurous beginner and you know knit and pearl stitch, um, my videos will help you to guide you through the pattern and you can easily knit a sweater. Even as complex as I write it up. But I don't, I think you can't put a grade on a, on a sweater. You can't just say this is only for people with intermediate skills or advanced. I think any knitter can learn any skills and if you just like daring <laughs> you can just do it um i do a lot about just dare yes <laughs> do i dare this or <laughs> somebody dared me to create a better fitting sweater um sure i'm there so just to try just try um and if you have questions um leave a comment below reach out to me, I'll help you. Um, a lot of designers, uh, this is a really great community. Um, people just help each other. I don't know what it is with knitters, but they're just so chill and they like to help and share knowledge. So this is a good space to be in, um, to learn a new skill, to advance a skill so this is what it's going to be all about um, on a weekly basis I will show you uh, some of my designs I will wear some of uh, other people's designs I do test knits once in a while um, I like to see how other um, designers uh, create their patterns grade their patterns um, I'm interested in the fit. I'm interested in how they the how they use techniques and methods. So sometimes I do dab into other people's designs. Um, most of the time, right now, I just I, I've accumulated enough to just work on mine, and I have a list of things that I want to accomplish and uh, create patterns for. It's not, it's very easy to grade it and to create it for 21 sizes. It's not that big of a deal. Um, and I can see it on the fly. Um, and the designing process, most of the time works, I just knit it and then I grade it and write a pattern. Sometimes the pattern is ready ahead of time and I just modify it slightly and, and create what I create. A lot of patterns that didn't make into pattern, I will re-knit them, like for, for, for example, this one. Um, 
this one never made into a pattern but i wear it all the time this is a cropped yoked sweater yoked sweater uh three quarter sleeves um, and you can use any variegated yarn because it shows that yarn i like that it's not uniform i like that it changes um, so this one will be a pattern um, just better pattern at this point because i will um, create a better structure with some of the new techniques that i've learned so this is it um i'll see you next week and hopefully we'll um, ask questions hopefully you will like these videos um, if you do like it like it leave a comment below um, welcome to my little space knitting space um, and I'll see you next week